Okay, let's talk about heat conductor types and methodology in regards to sizing conductors and overcurrent protection devices. External and internal heat impacts on conductor impacity. What does that title tell you? Heat changes the impacity of conductors, and it can come from a variety of sources. External sources include things like the ambient air temperature. We'll see our conductors are rated at a certain temperature. If they are in an environment that's different than that, we're going to have to adjust their impacity accordingly. Another form of external heat would be other current carrying conductors in the same conduit. When a conductor carries current, it's going to give off a little bit of heat. It's going to warm up. The more conductors we have in a conduit, the less air there is to dissipate that heat into, the more heat there's going to be as a result. Proximity to roof can certainly make a difference. When we have conductors that are in raceways or behind modules that are really close to the roof surface, Again, the direct sun and reduced airflow can cause them to operate at higher temperatures, especially when there's direct sunlight exposure. We all know that something sitting in the sun is going to be hotter than the ambient air temperature. So all things externally that can impact the temperature of a conductor and thus its ampacity. Internal effects include increased current, which means increased temperature. The more current we put through a conductor, the warmer it's going to get. We need to make sure it doesn't get too warm, in which case the insulation of the conductor could be damaged, or terminations where it's landed, like on a fuse holder, or the terminal on a disconnect switch could be overheated because of the conductor temperature itself. When we talk about heat, we're going to be doing all of our calculations in Celsius. Some of you may not love that, other of you are going to be totally fine with that. Really important that we do always use our Celsius values and we'll be seeing that throughout this presentation. Here's a table, NEC 310.4A, which shows some of the different conductor types. This is ex uh, an excerpt of that table. It's pretty long, it has all kinds of conductor types in it. These are really just the ones that we use in PV systems. And two of them aren't actually in this table. This table covers a wide range of wires and types and that are used for all kinds of different applications. One that we use a lot in conduit, THWN-2. It has a maximum temperature rating, that would be its insulation of 90 degrees Celsius. That dash two on it tells me that it has that 90 degrees C wet rating in wet conditions. So it can be used in dry conditions, it can be used in wet conditions. Hey, a conduit outdoors, that's considered a wet condition. Okay, so this is what we typically run in conduit, DC wiring, AC wiring, um, very common type of conductor. USC2 slash RHW-2, and that slash means that it's dual listed. You're gonna see both of these wire types printed on the conductor itself. As long as this is also marked sunlight resistant, it's gotta have that on there too, so it's really triple listed, USC2, RHW-2, and marked sunlight resistant, then we can use this outdoors. Again, it has a 90 degree C rating, dry or wet, and this is something that we use for PV array wiring. Probably more common these days is PV wire itself. We use this for lots of, of array wiring, but especially stuff over 600 volts. PV wire available up to 2000 volt rated. Um, it has a 90 degree C dry or wet rating. In some cases, it actually has higher temperature ratings beyond uh, the 90 degree C rating. It's available in a wide range of sizes. Sometimes it's used in conduit for PV output circuits from a combiner box. If you have a 1500 volt system, for instance, well, this is going to be the wire you can find that has that voltage rating, so that's going to be what you use. Now, PV wire is not in this table. It's not in the table. And as you see in the note there, it also says, hey, this PV wire is a non-standard outer diameter. It comes in different diameters, even for the same gauge wire from different manufacturers because they make it in different ways. It's all tested and listed and passed the same uh, testing but it may not be the same. Whereas the THWN-2 for manufacturer A and manufacturer B, they're gonna be the same. They're gonna be the same. We've got a lot of tables in the back of the NEC that will quickly tell us how many THWN-2s I can put in a certain type and size of conduit. That doesn't work for PV wire. That non-standard diameter means, hey, if we wanna see how many of these we can fit in a conduit, so for that example of a 1500 volt DC PV output circuit, for instance, we're gonna to have to manually calculate the diameter of the wire relative to the allowable space inside this particular size of conduit we're using. But a very common wire type, probably becoming more common than USC2 RHW-2. And then another PV system specific type of conductor is DG cable, distributed generation. 
This is for use with modules, inverters, trackers. Uh, a common application is it's part of a listed cable assembly that goes along with some types of microinverters, for instance. It can have different numbers of conductors in it. It's a multi-conductor jacketed cable. It could have grounding wires, it could have signal and communication wiring in it. There's a lot of flexibility for what goes inside the wire. And that's good for it to be able to be used for specific purposes. And I expect that you'll start to see more and more field wiring that is done using DG cable in the future as well. Just like PV wire, it's not in table 310.4a because it is somewhat new and it also doesn't have a wide range of applications outside of the solar industry yet. And finally is THW. I don't want to talk about this too much. Something that we use for things like battery cables, kind of want to contrast it to these other conductor types in that it has a lower temperature rating. It's uh, only uh, used in dry conditions with that temperature rating. It is able to be used in wet locations, but it has a 60 degree C insulation rating, much less, which can become an issue. And probably we're not putting our batteries in wet locations anyway, so that's fine. Must use appropriate lugs if it's finely stranded as compared to the normal stranding we see in conductor types. One, something that you may run into if you're working with energy storage. So what about our methodology here? We've looked at some of the some of the background information we need to have in our head to move forward. We're going to dive into wire sizing here very soon. There's really two approaches. There's two approaches to determining what conductor is going to be right for a given circuit. The first would be what I call adjusting the circuit current. And what we mean is really increasing the circuit current through math. We're not really doing it. We're not actually increasing it. We are applying some factors to it to come up with a new adjusted circuit current. And then once we have this adjusted circuit current, we can then pick a conductor that has the right ampacity for that, the correct ampacity for that. So an example would be, and we'll talk about these throughout the presentation, would be dividing by the adjustment or correction factors we're gonna apply for temperature or numbers of con conductors and conduit, whatever those may be. So uh, just as an example, just to kind of get an idea of what the methodology here is. Let's say we have a circuit current of 20 amps and I have some correction factors that I need to apply. These are going to usually be at a, a, a less than one. So there's a decimal value here. We're going to divide that 20 amps of circuit current by these correction factors. Don't worry about where they came from quite yet. Just take it for what it is. 20 divided by 0.67 my adjusted circuit current 29.85 amps i need a conductor that's rated for 29.85 amps i'm basically saying hey i have a certain amount of current but because of the conditions the wire is going to be operating in it needs to carry more than that current the correction factors tell us how much more and then once i apply them to the circuit current i can look for a con conductor that has an ampacity that meets that adjusted circuit current the other approach would be to correct our conductor ampacity. So we have a conductor that has a rated ampacity. We can take those same adjustment and correction factors and apply them to the conductor ampacity, effectively reducing it, decreasing it, correcting it, and then say, hey, is this wire big enough for the circuit current? It's really just two ways to approach it. I like the first way because I know how much current I have. I know what the adjustment factors are, and then I can go find a conductor that meets that ampacity. The second approach is more like, hey, I know this wire can carry this much current. How much can it carry under these adjustment and correction factors? All right, so this is a way to verify that the opacity of that conductor is equal to or exceeds the current of a given circuit, which is fundamentally what it needs to be able to do, right? The opacity has to be at least, if not more than, the current of the circuit. So in this case, we're going to multiply by the adjustment correction factors. We're going to start off with a rated ampacity. We're going to make it smaller by multiplying by decimal values. Then we're going to say, hey, this conductor actually in this application can only carry this much current. So continuing with our example, let's say, hey, we picked a 30 amp rated conductor. We'll, we'll look at the table where we find those ratings in a little bit. We've got those same adjustment and correction factors, 0.67, but now we're going to multiply it by that rated conductor ampacity. And this tells us that that 30 amp conductor with these correction factors applied to it can only really carry 20.1 amps. Well, that's more than the 20 amps we said we had in our circuit current in the uh, other option or other method above. So this conductor would be okay under these conditions for that 20 amps of circuit current. Two ways to approach it. We'll actually primarily be relying on the first way, but some of the double checks that we do 
in order to make sure that the conductor is okay, we'll apply the second method. And that second method effectively says, hey, under these conditions of use, these adjustment and correction factors, that 30 amp rated conductor can only carry 20.1 amps or less. 